Well, I want to greet you once again and say it's good to be able to speak to you and uh, to encourage you somewhat. Um, we need encouragement, I think, at the moment. Things are not very easy in the world. It's um, having come out of COVID, we're now faced with a number of other problems. And uh, what I'm sensing is the world has changed and we have to accept it and it won't really go back to what it was before. This, uh, sometimes it's difficult, uh, especially for a younger generation, to realize that periodically the world does go through change, political, financial, spiritual, and um, there's no way that it just goes back. It has to move on from there. And I, I want to bring to you quite an unusual message today because I'm, in reading, I was rather intrigued with the story of Elijah in the first book of Kings. And I'm dealing with chapters 17 and 18, uh, if you want to find the reference for it. Um, I'm quite staggered at the number of miracles that involve Elisha in, uh, sorry, it's Elijah, even in this short period. I mean, I've often preached down through the years, especially when I was a pastor, I would gladly preach on um, Elijah uh, in uh, 1 Kings 18, calling down fire from heaven. But if you look back, you find out that Elijah has a phenomenal history of miracles. Because if you start with chapter 17, Elijah, uh, the Tishbite, who was from Gilead, spoke to Ahab, the king of Israel, and said, uh, because of Ahab's sin, of course, and uh, I mean, if you look back into the previous chapter, um, uh, it was, he was encouraging the prophets to build an altar to Baal. And uh, Ahab, in verse 33 of the previous chapter, Ahab made a grove. And uh, Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. Now, that's quite remarkable. Here we've got a king, Ahab, marked out as having done more to provoke the Lord than any other king. So, by the time you come to Elisha in chapter 17, um, Elisha goes to Ahab and he makes a very strong statement. He says, as the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall be no dew nor rain in the following years, but according to my word. Now, that was extremely serious because at, at first you think, no, there was no rain. And in the subsequent verses, you, you see the sense that there was no rain. But it was not only that, but... Dew was important because if you look at the time before Noah, um, until the time of the flood, there had been no rain on the earth. But the earth was watered by a dew, and it was sufficient for um, to supply people with drinking water and also for the crops. But here it's very explicit that if there was no dew nor rain, it would mean disaster for the crops, and a various situation. So uh, the word of the Lord again came to Elijah. And I find this very interesting in the Old Testament, the number of times that the Lord actually directly speaks and commands. And I do believe that that can happen today in one sense, I feel that very often what I do is in response to a command of the Lord. Anyway, so what happens is this. Um, 
Once there's to be no rain and no dew, the Lord speaks to Elijah and says, get up, go to the east, and hide yourself by the brook Cheris, that's before Jordan. And it shall be that you will drink of the brook, and I've commanded the ravens to feed you. So he went. And this is quite a miracle because he was able to drink from the brook, and the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning. It's quite interesting. <laughs> bread and flesh in the morning and in the evening, and he had the water to drink. But it came to pass after a, a time, and this is where it gets interesting, that the brook dried up because there'd be no rain. So again, the word of the Lord comes to Elijah and tells him to go to Zarephath uh, and uh, dwell there. And I, God says, I have commanded a woman, a widow woman, to sustain you. Mm. So Elijah's acting under command, but the widow woman was also now under the command of the Lord. So he went to where the widow was, met her, saw her gathering sticks, and uh, said, I, I want you to uh, give me some water to drink and then to make me something to eat. Now, <laughs> you find out that uh, she answers, as the Lord your God lives, I don't have uh, a cake. I've only got a handful of meal in a barrel with a cruise of oil, and I'm gathering two sticks to make a final meal so that for me and my son, we will eat it and then die. So now Elijah speaks out and he says, don't be afraid. Go and do as you've said, but make me first a little cake and bring it to me and afterwards make for you and for your son. Because again, uh, here, Elijah is prophesying so strongly, and he says, The Lord God of Israel has said that the barrel of eel will not waste, and the cruise of oil shall not fail until the day that the Lord sends rain. So here is Elijah. Now he's the prophet that has commanded the rain to stop. He's now going to, after all this time, he's going to this widow and he's saying to her, the cruise of oil and the barrel of meal will not fail. And I believe there's a very strong message for us in that, that when we're working with God, the source of supply will never dry up. And I believe this is a very strong word from the Lord that in my life, what I need will not stop the anointing. The oil is like the Holy Spirit. The, the bread is like the Word of God. So the Word of God will never fail. And the oil of the Holy Spirit will never fail even in a time of drought.